Prime Minister Theresa May will visit India in early November for the UK-India Tech Summit. This visit is significant because it is the new PM's first visit outside the European Union. Now, this highlights the importance of the UK-India relationship, which PM Modi has called an unbeatable combination. Now, this visit is also important as the UK government allays concerns about the impact of the Brexit on business and underscores the importance of deeper bilateral engagement with India in a post-Brexit world. Now, the UK-India Tech Summit will bring together ideators, entrepreneurs, business leaders and policymakers from both sides for a three-day exchange. Shireen Bhan caught up with the UK High Commissioner to find out more. I was in, uh, in London in November last year when Prime Minister Modi visited the UK and talked about this unbeatable combination and talked about how these two countries can come together to create a leading global partnership. Uh, from where we stand today, what sort of progress has been made on that aspiration? Well, it was a really ambitious agenda uh, and we're working to it. That's the framework in which we're operating. I think we all recognize that we've still got a lot to do on it. It was a, it was a big checklist of things to do, a lot of homework. Uh, so we're working through that. So this uh, forthcoming visit of the new Prime Minister yes. is a really important moment in that journey. Mm -hmm. It is a journey and we're going through various phases. So we're going through the next phase. She's coming. Uh, it's the first bilateral visit she's doing outside the EU countries. That sends a really important signal mm -hmm. uh, to India. The uh, importance we attach to that relationship and to making uh, further progress on those objectives that we agreed a year ago. And she's coming to uh, inaugurate with Prime Minister Modi the uh, Tech Summit, mm -hmm. uh, which were the country partner. It was uh, an event that we agreed back in November in London last year between the two Prime Ministers at that time that we would be the country partner. So this is uh, a year later. We're doing exactly that. And it's a really important message uh, that she's sending at the same time. She's coming with uh, a group of small and medium-sized companies mm -hmm. from the whole of the UK, mm -hmm. very carefully from the whole of the UK, joining already a very large number of companies, British companies, who will be here for the Tech Summit. And looking at you know, those things that are really important to India, mm -hmm. the technology, the innovation, the design, education, you name it, the uh, advanced manufacturing, robotics, there's a whole bunch of, mm. of really, really important issues as India looks to develop its economy. So that's what we're bringing here and, as it were, laying out and explaining uh, very vividly what the collaboration that we're talking about should be. In terms of business confidence, one of the factors that's playing out is what happens post-Brexit. And these, this is going to be a long-drawn process of negotiating your way out of the EU. Uh, but from an Indian business point of view, what is the message that the UK would like to send out? It's a very clear message of uh, engaging uh, even more than we have in the past with our trading partners, our strategic partners outside the EU. Uh, so, Prime Minister is bringing uh, small and medium-sized enterprises from the UK. A large number of British companies uh, are coming over for the Tech Summit. Uh, and it is explaining that uh, there are certain things that are not going to change uh, as a result of Brexit. We will still be, as we have again been confirmed in the most recent figures, as the top destination for investment in the EU. Why? Because there's a whole bunch of companies who want to invest in the UK because they have confidence in the judicial structure and the, in the laws that uh, we apply in the regulatory mm. context, low taxation, skilled workforce, right time zone, right language all sorts of things that go uh, in our favor. Those are going to apply. You know, talking about uh, areas of opportunity and further collaboration, the defense sector uh, is a big sector that the Indian government is prioritizing. We've just seen the Raphael deal go through, and it seems to be G2G uh, collaborations that the Indian government would prefer at this point in time. How are you reading the defense story and the opportunities that it throws up for the UK? I think there's something really uh, important and interesting for Britain specifically uh, to do when it looks at this one. Uh, Prime Minister Modi the, and the current government have made it very clear that they have an ambition to develop their own uh, indigenous defense industry uh, and to move uh, from a sort of government uh, defense industry to a, a, a private sector industry. The only 
partner, the only ally of India who has done that transition is the United Kingdom. We've done exactly that transition successfully and we have uh, a very successful private sector defense industry across uh, a very broad spectrum. I would want to uh, talk to uh, our Indian counterparts here about what our experience has been, what the, the process, what that transition uh, means, how you deal with some of the challenges that they throw up, because I think there's a lot that uh, we can exchange and help on. So I, I take a, a pretty strategic long-term view of that one, which is you are going to through a process which takes some years, it will take some years to develop that capacity. I think we're a key partner and we need to demonstrate where the areas of collaboration should be and what we can, go back to this word I use, relevance, why we are both relevant to each other. This is, this is uh, you know, it's not inconceivable that we will develop into the point where we are uh, collaborating on the manufacture here of stuff not just for use in India but for export out of India elsewhere. Mm -hmm.